Since Labour got into power here in the UK a couple of weeks ago, there has been so many changes being made, especially around the employment laws. Now, there are so many things that you and I are entitled to as employees here in the United Kingdom that we really don't know about. And that's why in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the updates made by the Labour government on employment law, some of the things you should benefit either around paternity leave, zero hour contract, just to mention a few. So if you are currently in the UK as a worker, be it a part-time worker or a full-time worker, you're on a student visa or on a ski blocker visa, regardless of the visa category that you are, in as much as you work with an organization and you get paid a stipend or a salary or a wage, then you sure do want to stick to this video till the end. And if you're coming across this channel for the first time, come and do well to eat on the subscribe button to join the amazing growing family. And my returning subscribers, you guys are the reason why I do this on a weekly basis. Thank you for being here. I really do appreciate um, you guys. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. In the last couple of days, I've been having like loads of interactions with my company's HR. And the major reason for this interaction is because I'm trying to like understand some of the things I'm invited to as an employee within the organization and some of the benefits I think I should have access to that I'm not announcing, if that makes sense. And from the links HR has sent to me and some of the research I've made personally, I've discovered that I've been actually, you know, losing out on so many benefits that I'm entitled to as an employee. And you also might actually be losing out on some of these um, benefits. And in addition to the existing, um, you know, employment law, the labor government has also made quite a number of changes in the last couple of days, which has even made it better. I mean, some of the employment law used to have certain conditions. Some of those conditions have been taken away. Now, I'm going to, we're going to talk about some of this employment law in this video, and I'm going to start with the change in flexible working. And this is really for many people. Actually, those who know me personally, flexible working is a big thing for me. And the major reason is because I love to have control over my time and how I work, which was not you know, something I enjoyed in my first two years in the UK. I work as a healthcare assistant, so I had no flexibility on how I work. So when I got into data analytics and started working professionally, um, you know, as a data analyst, I have been enjoying the whole flexible working. And the UK government has made some changes on the flexible working. Now, this is one, one of the changes they made. Now, employees can now make two rather than one request a year for flexible working. And the deadline for employers to respond to requests has been reduced for three, from three months to two months. So it means that as an employee within the organization, you can require or request to you know, enjoy some flexible working. And I think this is really dependent on the kind of job you do, to be honest. And you know, it also states that employers will also give or will also have to explain the reasons for denying any request. And employees no longer have to explain the impact of their of their um, request. However, the list of reasons employers can use to deny request is remaining the same, including factors such as cost to the business, impact on quality, performance, or ability to meet customer demand. And which makes a lot of sense to be honest. Um, if the kind of job you do can be done remotely, I remember when I started my first um, data analyst job. I was usually in the office five times every week. I mean, practically Monday to Friday. And I think I had a conversation with my then line manager that, yeah, I would like to see if there's any possibility of, you know, working hybrid at some point. And I think about a month after I joined the organization, I got a chance to work three times in the office, two times at home. And at some point it moved to two times in the office and three times at home. So yeah, so you have the opportunity to ask for that flexible working. And as I said, it's really dependent on the kind of job you do. There are some job that does not actually permit your flexible work of the thing. For example, if you work as a teacher, the chances of you getting that flexibility on your work might not be there. I might be wrong, but those who work as teachers, you might want to probably correct this um, um, thought in the comment um, session. So yeah, they've made some changes to the flexible working. And if any employer is going to deny a request, they must have a good reason. And some of the reasons they can give is stated on culture two case. We want to have a look at it. So if it's something that I know would affect your job, then there might not be any reason for you to request this. An employee will also be able to make such requests from their first day of employment without having to wait the 28 or 26 week qualifying period. So for those who used to work, so for me, I had to wait 
for 26 weeks, which is roughly about about roughly about 26 weeks is going to be about six months. Six months will be 24 weeks. So that's about seven months there, about between six to seven months before you can have, uh, ask for the flexible working. And the new policy is now saying you can actually ask for that flexible working from the first day you get on the job, which is really an amazing thing, to be honest. Another major change made by the Labour government on employment law is carer leave. Now, employees are now entitled to take one week of unpaid leave a year if they have caring responsibility. Now, this applies to any employee who are caring for a spouse, civil partner, child, parent, or other dependents who need care because of a disability, old age, or any illness or injury likely to require at least three months of care, the leave entitlement is available from the first day of employment with no qualifying period. So the good thing is that, you know, you can actually get this leave if you have any child or any partner that needs your, your, you know, your attention as a carer, you can actually get a one week unpaid leave a year if need be. So yeah, this is, which is a good thing. So you don't need to wait for any qualifying period. You can actually get a leave from your first day on the job. Now, another change being made by the Labour government is around increased protection against redundancy for pregnant employees. And I think pregnant employees are one of the people that you know enjoy quite a number of benefits in the workplace. And not just people who are pregnant, also people who are trying to adopt, there are quite a number of benefits that you should know about and leverage on. Now, employees taking certain type of parental leave now have protection from redundancy for at least 18 months. This protection means that if their role is made redundant, the employer must give them first refusal to any other vacancy. However, they can still made redundant if no appropriate vacancy is available. Previously, employees only have only had this protection during their period of maternity, adoption, or shared parental leave, which is a good thing. Now, many people who are on maternity leave they have this protection to ensure that their job is not being made redundant within the period of the maternity leave. Now, the new policy is now saying that these individuals can actually experience or enjoy that protection on up to 18 months from the day their you know, maternity leave starts. Now, the protection now begins from the day the employer is first notified of the employee's pregnancy and ends 18 months after the date of the child's birth. This protection also now extends to 18 months after the date of adoption for parents taking adoption leave or 18 months after child's birth in case where a parent is taking at least six weeks of shared parental leave. So yeah, which is a good thing for those who are looking at having a child very soon and would like to know what are the things that can benefit you know, around um, protection on, uh, protection against redundancy. Now, another thing that changes has been made is more flexibility for uh, paternity um, leave. Employees taking statutory paternity leave can now split their two weeks entitlement into two separate one week block rather than having to take them both together. They can now take their two weeks at any time within the year after the child has been born rather than within only eight weeks after birth as previously required. So if you're taking a paternity leave, you're required to take your two weeks um, you know, within um, eight weeks after the child has been born but now the good thing is that you can now take your paternity leave and spread it across so you can take one week this month and take another one week the following month depending on how you want to structure your paternity leave which is a good thing so if you're having expecting a child very soon you can also leverage on um, this opportunity and another change made on the, on the employment law is the zero hour contract so labor has pledged to hand one-sided flexibility and ensure all job provide workers with baseline level of security um, pre uh, predictability. To achieve this, they will ask employers to include the number of hours employee regularly work in their contract based on a 12-week reference period. Workers will also receive reasonable notice of any change in working hours and be given compensation for shifts that are cancelled or reduced. Workers will retain their rights to be paid for overtime. So if uh, your business owner, you know, or employer who employs people on zero hour contracts, you will need to review and amend your contract once this become law. So I know some people really love zero hour contract. I know quite a number of people who prefer to work zero hour contract just because they don't want to be tied to specific number of hours. 
But what the government is trying to do is to protect every individual because so many people who are zero as contracts. I know people who, you know, I said I had a chat with someone a couple of days ago who, you know, had to travel or commute about 15 minutes to a place of work only for her to get to work and she was told that her shift has been cancelled and she had to go back home. Do you get what I mean? So I think the government is trying to like put in that protection for employees in this regard whereby if your shift gets cancelled or needs to be cancelled, you need to be given reasonable time to, you know, to be informed by your employer and you know get compensated um where need be so yeah it's a good thing however some people prefer to zero contract they just want to have control over how many hours they choose to work on a weekly on a or on a monthly um, basis so these are some of the changes made by the uk government at the moment on employment law if you have any additional thoughts or additional information that has not been mentioned in this video please state in the comment section and if you also have any questions please also drop those questions in the comment section and if you're coming across this channel for the first time, please do also hit on the subscribe button to join the amazing growing family and my returning subscribers. Thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate you guys. So this will be the end of this video and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.